Okay, before we go any further, let's uh, ask ourselves the basic question, what is a rack inside Live? The answer is that a rack is, gives the Live user the opportunity to use parallel processing instead of serial processing. Now, what do we mean by serial processing? That, what I mean by that is that the signal goes through the tracks and everything that's in the track in series. So here I've got an audio track, and I've got the Winston's Amen break on here. And I've got three effects on here. I've got a reverb, I've got a compressor, and I've got a delay. Now, when a signal comes through these FX processors, they're going to go into the reverb first, then into the, into the compressor, and then into the delay. Uh, is, and this is what it's going to sound like. Okay, it's pretty muddy. Um, now, the reason why it sounds that way is because everything's going through there, uh, first through the reverb, and then the compressor is compressing the reverb, and then the delay is de delaying the compressed reverb. Uh, uh, makes sense. We could probably r diminish the mud by uh, carefully playing with the dry wet values of each of those things, but let's say, for example, what we really wanted to do is we wanted to put reverb on it, we wanted to compress it, and we wanted to put delay on it, but we didn't want to do we didn't want to do it in such a way where uh, each of the FX processors was working on the other FX processors. So then we're uh, talking about parallel processing. And once again, racks make it possible to use parallel processing inside Live. This is a diagram of the way that it, wor it works with serial processing. Um, as you can see, it goes through each of the FX in series. Now, this is a diagram of parallel processing. This is what racks make possible. It, uh, the signal will go into each of the processors on its own and then head straight to the output without going through the FX processors. Now here's how you set that up. What I've got here is uh, I'm going to go and create a new audio effect rack here. And then I'm going to drop in a reverb. And I'm going to drop in a compressor. you got to click on this button to get the drag and drop piece back. And then I'm going to drop in simple delay. And for readability's sake, let's rename these guys. Okay, now, so th this is a left to right diagram of the exactly what we we're looking at in that top to bottom diagram. The signal is going to be going through each of these. FX processors, but then it's going to go straight to the output without going to the other processors. So, uh, just to remind, here's what it sounded like when they were going in series. And here's what it sounds like using parallel processing. So obviously, what we just heard is that the compressor was working a lot better uh, um, in terms of processing the original signal, and it wasn't comp uh, compressing the reverb, so we got a lot less mud. That's just one of the many, many uses of using of racks inside Live. I'm going to get into a few more in just a minute. Okay, next thing I would like to talk about is macros. Now, macros are a feature of racks that allow you to, basically they allow you to assign more than one knob to more than one parameter inside the effects or instruments or whatever that's inside the rack. Uh, I want to show you how that works right now. So I'm going to, here I've got my uh, Amen Break by the Winstons sitting here inside my audio track. Now I'm going to add an audio effect rack, it's empty, and then I'm going to add a, um, Let's add an auto filter, do, 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 do. and I'm going to switch him to high pass. You'll see why in a second. Let's switch him back to there, and then I'm going to click that guy again so I can put on another effect. Actually, I'm going to put the I'm actually going to put the effect behind him, and not in the uh, not in this area, which would make a parallel thing like we mentioned before. We wanted these effects to be in series, so 
let's put, put him right here. That puts another one right behind the first one. And then I'm going to turn the dry wet to zero. Okay, now macros. To get to the macros part, then you just click on this button here. And then there's a button here that says map mode. Right now, none of these are mapped to anything. Here's how you map them. You click this map mode button. And then click on whatever parameter you want. I want to click on the frequency of the filter right here. And then click on map. And now, as you can see, it's smart named that thing to frequency. I'm going to un That's going to go away in a second, though. Now I'm going to click on dry wet for the ping pong delay. And map that also. Okay, so now that guy is, uh, if you look up here, that macro is assigned to both of those things. I'm going to rename this guy. I'm going to name him whoosh. We'll see why in a second. Okay, so watch how this works. I'm going to unmap it. Okay, we're out of map mode. Now I'm going to uh, play the clip. Now watch the uh, the auto filter and the dry wet thing for our uh, two effects. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is how to use chain selection in, uh, inside a rack. Now, this is a macro feature, that's why I wanted to handle the macros first. Um, what this does is this allows you to switch between the effects on a, a rack instead of, go, uh, instead of always going through all the parallel chains, you can also choose between them. So check this out, this is kind of an interesting feature. Uh, I'm going to go back to my, uh, I want to get an effects rack, audio effect rack. Okay, now I've got here, I've got a standard analog square. It just goes like so. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to, uh, I've got open in my EQ8 uh, thing, I've got my formant filters here. So I'm going to do a, uh, we'll do the vocal A here, so you can hear how that sounds. Okay, not not too great. I mean, it's okay. It's kind of cool, but let's uh, let's drop a different ch chain in for each one of these guys here. So A E I O U. Okay, I've got each of those guys in there. Now, if I was being really diligent, I'd rename those things, but I wanted to be quick. Okay, now check out. The, there's this uh, button here. Is this chain? This here, this the, the selection chains for each of these. Uh, the selection areas for each of these chains using the macro switch. So. I'm going to make each of these guys as big as possible now. Let's just take a second. And you can see the uh, EQ guy jumping around over here on the right. And now I'm going to go to the macro page and I'm going to cl click map mode like we did before. Now I'm going to click this area for the chain selector right here. So I'm clicking this top area, this green, this green in my view. Click map. See how it switches, switches the chain selector? Now I'm going to make it so that each of these guys is a individual range inside of this thing and there's an easy shortcut to do this right, right click and hit distribute ranges equally okay so that brought it into five different ranges now I'm gonna click this guy again now all I gotta do to move between them is changes now take a look at the uh, these guys here sort of in, uh, you can see the where the signal's flowing and of course if you want to make uh, use clip envelopes then you can make this extra fancy um, we've got the chain selector one right here pretty easy way to, to switch between effects and it's a uh, as you can imagine, you can come up with all kinds of combinations that could be a cool way to switch back and forth. Another interesting thing is if you make it so the ranges are uh, so that they coincide with each other, then it cross fades between them. 